Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, and today I want to help you with one of the single biggest obstacles in your dating life, learning how to get over your fears of rejection. Let's say that maybe you're out, maybe it's at a bar, maybe it's at a party, maybe you're killing time in between classes, and you see someone who is just amazing. They could be a perfect stranger, they could be someone you've had your eye on for a very long time. It doesn't matter. What does matter is, is that there is nothing in the world that you want more right now than to go over to them, to introduce yourself, start talking, and get a date. Okay, maybe you want a Tesla 3, but this is definitely within the top five. But the instant you start thinking about going over there and talking to them, it starts. Your heart starts to pound, your feet get heavy, your palms are sweaty, and you're doing your best not to puke on your shoes right then and there. While you're feeling like crap, your brain is racing in a mile a minute, coming up with all the ways that this is going to be horrible. You're going to say the wrong thing, you're going to creep her out, and you're going to get rejected so hard it's going to go back in time and split up your parents. Meanwhile, as you're dealing with all of this anxiety, you can see someone else someone who is clearly not feeling the same problems you are, going up to this person, talking with them, getting their number. Now you're sitting there asking yourself, hey, what does this person have that I don't have? Besides a date. You're left wishing that you could be as fearless as this guy was, that you could talk to women just as effortlessly as they did. Here's the thing, you can. You just have to learn how to conquer these fears and anxieties that are holding you back. Now, here's a little secret. Everyone gets anxious when they're talking with someone new. We all, no matter who you are, get a little nervous when it comes to talking with someone that we're attracted to. No one wants to screw it up and everybody's worried that they will. The difference isn't that the socially successful don't feel anxiety. It's that they know how to deal with it, how to channel it, and how to push through it. One of those mistakes that a lot of people dealing with anxiety assume is that the key to getting over fear and anxiety is to just not feel it, which is how you end up going to the bar for a drink to build up your courage. But you know, that first drink really wasn't quite doing it, so you get a second drink. But hey, you might as well get a third drink because that second drink seems to have gotten lost on the way to your stomach and you need to send out a search party. So yeah, now three drinks in, you may be fearless. You're also kind of a drunk asshole. <laughs> and believe me, I speak from experience of being that drunk asshole. The only person who really thinks that you're charming and witty just then is you. I don't think I've ever met a person quite as enchanting as you, and I don't understand how I could have gone through my entire life having never met someone so fascinating. And my dear, I am prepared to sit here and listen to your entire life story. Ew. It, it must not have hurt when you fell from heaven, because cause you got um all that, all that padding back there. Your ass, it's huge. Can I get your number? Plus, you may not be in a place where you can drink, you may not drink yourself, and really, using alcohol as a social lubricant or as a way to get over these anxieties, it's a crutch, and you can't rely on it. It's only going to cause you more problems in the long run. You can't rationalize your way outside of anxiety either, definitely not when you're in the moment. Yeah, I mean, sure, you're smart, you're not going to let your primitive lizard brain get in the way of your primate brain getting busy, are you? But emotions don't respond to logic. It's not when you're feeling them. You can't reason your way out of being afraid. I should know. I hate flying. And I could cite you chapter and verse about all the ways that flying really is the safest form of transportation, and I totally believe them, but that's not going to stop me from white knuckling my way through the entire flight. Here's the thing. The problem isn't fear. The problem is how you let that fear control you. You can overcome your fear, but honestly, the only real way to do that is through confronting it. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go full tilt boogie and make yourself as terrified as you possibly can and see what's gonna happen first. You get over your anxieties or you have a heart attack. What you want to do is learn how to manage your fear, how to control it, how to channel it so that you can confront it and conquer them. Now, the first thing that you need to do is simple. You want to change the context. Now, I realize this is going to sound woo-woo as all fuck, but trust me, this works. I do this all the time. The crazy thing about the human experience is that we are actually really bad at understanding why we feel the way that we feel. Now, I, I can hear a lot of you screaming at me right now. No, of course you know why you feel the way you feel. You're terrified. You're anxious. You feel this all the time. But here's the weird thing. The way that we feel and the reasons that we feel that way 
are two separate things. Our brains feel the physical sensations of the emotion and then it backfills the reason in later. For example, the physical sensations of fear are the same as the physical sensations of excitement or arousal. It's context that makes the difference. When we were evolving as apes in the savanna, we didn't have time to really kind of question things. We needed to survive and we needed to respond to danger instantly. So now when we feel our heart racing and our muscles trembling and the adrenaline is dumping into our system, our brain goes, oh shit, what's going on? Um, are we dying? What's happening? Is there, is there a tiger over there? Is there a tiger in that bush? No? Okay, so what's going on? Oh, oh, Cat Dennings is over there. We're not terrified, we're in love. So when your anxiety is kicking to high gear and you're starting to lock up, you need to remind yourself, you're not terrified, you're excited. Yeah, okay, maybe a little nervous too, but mostly excited. Change the context of the way that you feel and you change the way that you relate and respond to those feelings. The next thing you wanna do ties into managing those physical feelings and that is very simple. You want to focus on your breathing. When you're starting to feel that anxiety rise, when you're starting to feel terrified, I want you to breathe in to the count of four, hold it for the count of three, and then breathe out to the count of four again. Just focus on the breathing and the counting. And as you exhale, you want your shoulders to come down, you want your arms to get all nice and loose, and you want to just feel the tension melt out of you on the exhale. When you're anxious or when you're scared, your breathing starts to pick up because you're trying to hyperoxygenate your blood, get it ready for that fight or flight moment. And then your heart speeds up because it wants to get that oxygen rich blood to your brain, to your muscles, and that gets them ready for motion. And that makes you feel even more anxious. But you can short circuit this by focusing on your breathing. Slowing your breathing down slows down your heart rate. And you literally cannot be afraid when you have a slow and steady heart rate. So focusing on your breathing helps bring all of that under control. Now, this isn't gonna make you 100% fearless, but it is going to calm things down enough that you can work through it all, that you can push past this fear and this anxiety, as long as you don't let your brain rev up the anxiety engine again. This, incidentally, is why I recommend what I call the three second rule. Once you see someone that you want to approach, you have three seconds to go up and talk to them. So as soon as you see them, you have the count of one, two, three, and now you have to be walking towards them. Why? Because it forces you to commit before your brain can come up with all of these horrible worst case scenarios that starts with you saying hello and ends with you getting maced and thrown into jail. You haven't had time to psych yourself out yet. Now you're standing in front of them and you have to open your mouth and have this conversation. Let's be honest here. Most of the time, you're not actually afraid of the rejection. I know, I know, I can hear you yelling at me, but really what you're more afraid of is the discomfort of the fear of the rejection. Winston Churchill was right. Fear itself is almost always worse than the thing that you're afraid of. And having spent so much time being afraid of this thing and anticipating the fear, you start to try to avoid it. I should know. When I first started out, I was terrified of rejection. I would never let myself admit that that was the problem. I just came up with a whole bunch of perfectly legitimate excuses as to why I couldn't possibly approach someone. Oh, no, she obviously has a boyfriend. No, she's with a group. I don't like this song. She's too close to the bathroom. I've been here for too long. I, I'm too cold. I'm too hot. It's been too long since my last approach. It hasn't been long enough since my last approach. I'm just not feeling it. She's got the wrong kind of lips. And honestly, the truth was, I was totally afraid that I was gonna fuck it up somehow and then it would become so huge and embarrassing that I would never be able to show my face at the bar, around my friends who were at the party, or just in town ever again. Now, obviously, that has changed. I have made literally thousands of approaches. And I can tell you, I have crashed and burned more times than day- What? What do you mean I can't use that joke? Okay, um, I can tell you from experience, I have been shot down more times than jo Seriously? I've been shot down more times than a Russian pilot in an 80s action movie. And out of all of those rejections, out of all the times that I have been shot down in flames, I want to show you the worst rejection I have ever gotten. Hi, I saw you over there and you seem like you're really cool and I just wanted to meet you and hi, my name is Harris. Yeah? Okay, well, nice meeting you. 
that was it. Not especially fun, but it wasn't that bad either, especially as I learned not to take things personally. Now I realize it's really hard not to take rejection personally. Come on, you're getting rejected. How is that not personal? But the truth of the matter is, like Picard said, you can commit no errors and still lose. That's not weakness, that's life. And life is a crapshoot. As tempting as it is to think that we can control everything and that if you do everything perfectly, you win, there are a lot of times where you're going to get turned down for reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with you. Maybe they've had a long day, they haven't had a good breakfast, and they're kind of cranky. You look like their asshole ex. They just got out of a relationship. They just had a fight with their friends. All of these things have nothing to do with you. Their rejection isn't personal. It is just a case of wrong time, and there's nothing you could do about it. It's like blackjack. You do the best that you can. You stack the odds in as much of your favor as you possibly can, but there will be a lot of times where just it is not going to work for you, and you're going to have a streak of bad luck. Even at the times when it is about you, it's not about all of you. One of the things that people get wrong about rejection is that we take it as a judgment about everything about us and not one specific thing that happened at this particular moment. Maybe you joked too much, so it felt like you were putting on a performance rather than having a conversation. Maybe you were a little too touchy. Maybe you weren't showing enough interest. Maybe they just didn't like the smell of your cologne or the way that you style your hair or the shirt that you were wearing that day. Now, is that a little nitpicky? Yeah, kind of. But that's the whole point. Women aren't Mjolnir. They don't judge whether or not you as a whole person are worthy. They don't have whoever should see these panties, if they be worthy, will have the power of score tattooed on their butt cheek or their thigh somewhere. There was just something that didn't click with them this time, and you'll do better next time. Once you realize that, rejection doesn't sting quite as much, and it's not quite as scary especially if you can take a step back from it and look at the bigger picture. One of the mistakes that a lot of people make is that they get very hung up on this one person who's turned you down. And I'm not going to lie, it totally sucks that this person turned you down. You liked them, you were hoping they liked you, they didn't, that really blows. But the bigger picture is, is that you're looking for someone who likes you, who is into you, who you connect with, and who you like. The fact that that person didn't like you is a shame, but it's also a sign they're not right for you. Getting hung up on someone with a case of one-itis and never approaching again is only going to screw you over. There are millions of women out there who are just as amazing, if not more so. The more that you let yourself get hung up on one rejection, the harder that it's going to be for you to get over it. So, instead of focusing on one loss, you want to look at the bigger picture. One rejection doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you found one person that you're not compatible with, or the way that you're flirting with them, the way that you're interacting with them didn't work. You're learning, you're improving, you're doing better. And if you take a step back, you can see that. You're doing better every time. Yeah, you didn't get the number, but you went up and talked to them, which is something you may not have ever been able to do in the first place. You actually hung into that conversation longer than you believe possible. You had them laughing with you, but just for whatever reason, it didn't quite work. You're learning your style, you're learning what works for you, you're learning what doesn't work for you, what you need to work on for next time. That's huge. That is part of how you improve. Yeah, rejection's not fun, but it's also not something to fear. It's something you learn from. The more that you can change the context, the more that you can change your relationship with your fears and your emotions around dating and rejection, the more fearless you'll become. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. Over time, I've told you some of the stories about how I've gotten rejected and how I've gotten over my fears of it, so I want to hear your stories. Tell me a little about how you've dealt with your fears of rejection in the comments below. Also, I'm expanding the channel a little bit. I want to take some of your questions and answer them on video, so if you have a question or a short topic you would like to see me address, then either share it in the comments below or send it to me at doc at doctrineerdlove.com and put for YouTube in the subject header. Remember, keep it short and simple, a couple lines at the most, that makes sure that I'll be able to use it. Meanwhile, if you've enjoyed the video, then give me the old thumbs up and let me know. And if you've really been enjoying the series and you want to help support me, then please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash doctrineerdlove. Even one dollar a month is a huge help. If you want more dating advice, I got books, you want to read them, links to buy them are in the description below. Go check them out.
And if you do, do me a favor, leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. It's a huge help. Meanwhile, follow me on Twitter at, at Dr. Nerd Love. Join the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Dr. Nerd Love. And as always, hit the Dr. Nerd Love logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will be back with you next week with more tips about love, sex, and dating. Later!